Hey everyone, I want to show you guys how to make a simple card using the print and cut feature and adding a score line. Um, that's a little tricky, so I just want to show you guys how to do it. So first off, if you haven't done a print and cut before, you want to calibrate your printer. So you go up here to the upper left hand corner with those three lines and you go down to calibration. You'll select print then cut and you'll select your printer. You'll print off a page. Now I've already done this, so I'm not gonna show you guys this today, but you'll print off a page and it will just be a bunch of shapes and have your registration marks. You'll lay that down on your printer and you'll follow the prompts. And as long as everything cuts correctly, you're calibrated and you're ready to go. So I'm just going to make a simple four by six card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my shapes right over here. I'm going to select a square and then I'm going to go up here and unlock it and I'm going to make it six inches wide and eight inches tall because we're going to be folding it in half. I'm going to zoom out a little so you'll be able to see it better. And what I'm going to do is go over here in my layers panel and turn this white because we're doing print then cut. So any color that I leave on the screen is going to print and I just want to use white cardstock. So I'm just going to leave it white here. Now I'm going to go back over to the shapes and I'm going to select a score line. I'm going to go up here to rotate and rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go over here and change the width to six inches to match the width of our card. Then I'm going to go up here to select all. And then I'm going to go to align, center horizontally, back to align, and center vertically. That way I know that my score line is perfectly centered on my card. Now I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to be making a little card for my sister to give her future mother-in-law. So I'm going to go over to images and she wanted an anchor. So I'm just going to search anchor and pull up one that I like. I'm going to insert it. And now I want this to go on the top of the card. So I'm going to go up here to flip and I'm going to flip it vertically. So that way when I fold the card, it shows the correct way. I'm not going to, I'm just going to place it where I think I, it will look nice. And I'm going to select this anchor and while holding the control key, I'm going to select my square and I'm going to slice it. Now I'm going to get rid of the pieces that I don't need and I'm going to leave my score line hidden behind there for now. And um, I'm going to go over to, I already wrote up some text that my sister wanted and I'm going to go up, it's behind the card now. So I'm going to go up to arrange and move it to the front. Uh, my sister wanted it the same color as her wedding invitation, so I saved that and I'm gonna change it right down here using the hex code. And then I'm going to change my text to print. That way you can see what it's like when it's going to print so you know beforehand. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you guys so you can see. I'm going to go up here to my letter space tool and I'm going to get these as close together, my letters as close together as I can. Now there's no need to weld this like you would with a cut because it's just, it's gonna print so you're not really gonna see it. So that's about as close as I think I can get. So I'm going to ungroup and then I'm going to zoom in again. I like to really get up close when I'm doing this so that I can really make sure that my lines are overlapping perfectly. Now what I like to do here is I just use the arrow keys as much as I can on my computer keyboard and I'm just sometimes I manually move them but now what I'm going to do here is I think this one's good so I'm going to select it all and I'm going to weld it doesn't matter if you weld or attach because it's print and cut, but if it was a cut, then you would weld because it's cursive. So I'm going to move these uh, a little too much. So I'm going to move these letters just a tiny bit, get them a little closer together. And once I have it looking how I want it, I'm going to weld or attach each line so that I can center this all together and it's going to look nice and even. So I'm going to just select this and move it over a little 
and I'm gonna do that for each line. It's a little bit time consuming, but I really think it makes it look that much better in the end when you can make sure that everything's really lined up nicely and evenly. So while I'm doing this, um, the most important thing when doing print and cut is that we are, oops, <laughs> uh, we don't want all of our letters to cut out. So we are going to be using the flatten feature, which is for print then cut. You can see my G filled in because that line was a little too close. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to move it just a tiny bit and try again and make sure that it, we're good. All right. So once we flatten, that's going to flatten the letters, my words, to the shape of the card. But we don't want to flatten the score line because it's print then cut. So that won't show up. So I'm going to show you what we do with that score line. Now that I have all these welded, I'm going to select them all and attach them. All right, I'm going to pause you guys here while I make these adjustments and then I'll come back and show you how we finish up our card. Okay, now that I have all of my letter spacing done and I have attached each individual row or line, I'm going to drag and select all of my lettering and I'm going to go up to a line and I'm going to center horizontally. And oops, I forgot to attach some things here. That's how you find out. So I'm going to attach these and then I'm going to do that again and align and I'm going to center horizontally. And now I'm going to attach all of these together so it stays in place. I'm going to zoom back out and I think that it will look really nice for the anchor to show up blue as well. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my shapes and I'm going to select a square and I'm going to move it over to the side and unlock it. And I'm just going to select a blue color because I'm going to cut that later. So now I'm going to go back in my layers panel and I'm going to select my score line and I'm going to go up to a range and I'm going to move it to the front. That way I can see where I'm placing this blue card in relation to the score line to make sure it's not too small or too big. Now I have my square unlocked so I can move it around and make sure I like the sizing. I'm just going to cut this out of blue card stock. I'm not going to print it. So I like the sizing and I'm just going to move it over to the side. And then I'm going to go down to my writing and I'm going to place it on my card. And I'm going to, while my writing is selected, I'm going to hold this control key on my keyboard and I'm going to select the square shape of my card and I'm going to align and I'm going to center horizontally and I'm going to center vertically. That moved it up a little too high, so I'm just going to do this center horizontally. Now that we're done designing our card, what I'm going to do is select the score line and I'm going to go over my layers panel to the eye and I'm going to hide it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my card and my writing and I'm going to flatten it right over here. And then, you know, you can't really see the shape anymore because it's white. So it is going to be hard to see, but that's okay. It's going to cut out just fine. Now I'm going to go back over to my layers panel. I'm going to unhide my score line. I'm going to go up to a range so that you guys can see it and I'm going to move it to the front. And I'm going to, while that's selected, I'm going to hold the control key on my keyboard and I'm going to select my flattened set here. Or I can just do this here. Oh, my computer decided it's going to pause for a minute. So what we're going to do is select them both and attach. Once you have your flattened set, you can attach your score line there. And that is going to hold your score line in place without affecting how your image cuts and prints. All right, so that's frozen. 
All right, so once we can attach it, we're gonna go and make it. All right, we'll just select it all here. Okay, it's selected. I can see in my layers panel, so I'm gonna go over here and attach. I'm gonna save my project because it's giving me an error, but it's giving me the option to save it. So I'm gonna save it quickly. It's gonna reset. And then I'm gonna reload the page. Let's just take a moment. And I'm gonna go back to my projects. I'm gonna select my card, customize. And I don't think that score line attached. No, nope, it didn't because we would see attached set over here. So we're just gonna go ahead now and select them both and attach. And you can still see our blue squares over there. So now we're going to go to make it. Now you're gonna see this black box around your card. That's the registration mark that your Cricut is going to read in order to know exactly where to cut. Now you don't see my anchor because again, it's white, but it's going to cut out. So we're going to continue. I'm going to select my maker. And now if you have a maker and you don't have the scoring wheel yet, um, I'm gonna show you how to change it to the scoring stylus. Okay, so I'm going to print. Make sure you always leave your bleed on. That is very important because it's the bleed is on so that when your Cricut cuts, it doesn't leave white edges. So I have my printer selected and I'm using cardstock. So I'm going to print it and then I'll select my material as light cardstock. And I'm gonna leave it at light cardstock because my blue paper is also light cardstock. So right out down here, over here on the right, you'll see edit tools, and you can just select your scoring stylus if you don't have the scoring wheel. So we're going to select continue, and then I'm gonna move this aside, and I'm gonna show you over here, I'm just gonna load my scoring stylus. And while my card is printing, I'm gonna set my mat out and I'm gonna go grab it from my printer and then we'll cut it. Okay, now that my print is done, you can see it here. And I'm a little worried that the ink is still a little wet, so I'm, I usually let it dry for a minute or two, but I'm just going to carefully press it on here and make sure I'm okay. And now I'm just gonna load my mat. And because I had already selected light card stuff, I just have to wait for my go button. And we're gonna see, it's gonna, um, it's going to score it first, and then it's going to cut it. And you can see that my light went on. That is the Cricut reading the registration mark so it knows where to score and cut and do everything. Now, if you have the maker, you can use light colored paper for print and cut, but if you only have an explorer, you can only use white paper. Sometimes if it's glossy or shiny, if you're using printable vinyl, then you might notice that there's a problem with it cutting. Sometimes if it's too glossy, it's too shiny, then the light gets a little bit confused. my scoring got switched back to the scoring wheel so I have to go back and switch that now if that happens that's all right it's just gonna read it again um, but as I was saying if if you're having trouble with the sensor not reading your registration marks because your material is too shiny or glossy or or whatever. You can sometimes close the lid on your machine, um, make your room a little darker, or sometimes you need to shine a flashlight on it and make it a little brighter. Uh, there are a few different techniques that you can try depending on what you're doing with print and cut for your material. But usually um, with paper you won't have an issue because there's no shine or gloss to it or anything like that. So this is really great for making cards, especially if you want to do a really pretty watercolor image and that's really hard to try and layer, in, even in paper or vinyl, it's really difficult. So I really like to use the print and cut for features like this. And I know this is simple and 
my sister could have written the card out, but I think that this is just a really nice way to add a little something to it. So you can see it's going to cut out my anchor first. And I'm gonna get my blue paper ready for that little piece on the inside of the card. And then when this is done, I'm just going to put my blue paper on. I'm gonna cut that little square. And then I'm, I have a spray adhesive. I'm not going to use it right now, but usually I use a spray adhesive when I have something like this. But you could use a glue or whatever you prefer. So now I'm just going to remove my excess pieces. And I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to take off these pieces and get my blue going while I show you guys my, my card. This on nice, and because I'm still using light cardstock, I don't have to worry about changing my settings at all. So, I'm going to show you here. It might be a little hard to see, but you can see the score line perfect. And so, we're just going to fold it carefully along my score line. See it? Fold it nice. And you could even put, you know, a different color paper. Or something under here or you could have put an image and let it peek through I could let the writing peek through but I think the blue anchor will look really nice so that's why I chose to do the paper all right now that my blue layer we're gonna let that cut and then I'll show you just how it looks all together I'm not going to use my spray adhesive tonight because I like to do that on a nice big open work area because it leaves sticky spray all over the place. So I'm just going to show you quickly what it will look like all together. Okay. There we go. There you go. Cute little card. And also a real quick tip, just while I'm here, when using paper, I like to use the blue mat, that's what's recommended. And I like to flip it over and I like to remove the mat from the paper and not the paper from the mat. And that helps prevent it from curling up. Can't wait to see your cards.